We have a few smartphone choices here in the US with Apple, Google, Samsung, Motorola, and others. But there are many more options when you look around the world, and some of these still work on a few networks here with US SIM cards. For the past couple of weeks, I've been using a new phone that is the first smartphone available that is powered by the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 Elite processor. And it is a phone I would love to see available to all of my viewers in the US for a few reasons, so let's take a closer look. Hello everybody, this is Matthew Miller, otherwise known online as Palm Solo, and thanks for visiting the Mobile with Matt YouTube channel. Please consider subscribing and interacting with me here in the comments section below. I've tested hundreds of smartphones over the past couple of decades, and I always prefer ones with Qualcomm processors due to the speed, the power, and the powerful cellular connectivity that has never let me down, even in areas with low signal strength. So the phone I've been trying is the iQ13. iQ stands for iQuest on and on. It's iQOO. And this is the third iQ smartphone that I've had the opportunity to try out. And the legend color one that they sent along to me, legend is this white back with the BMW branding on it. This is the one that I've tried before with this color. And this legend one they sent me has that lovely matte pearl white back with that BMW branded partnership. One of the first things that struck me when I turned on the phone is that unique make monster halo lighting effect you can see here. That is positioned around the rear camera module. You can customize this LED lighting using the dynamic light utility for music, calls, messages, gaming, and charging with up to 72 different lighting options. The lights can have effects such as pulse, breathing, heartbeat, flowing light, and other custom patterns. So with that introduction and that halo light, let's check out some key specifications and then I'll share some of my other experiences using this phone. So as I mentioned earlier on, this is the first phone shipping internationally with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 Elite processor. It is powered by the FunTouch OS 15 user interface that's based on Android 15, and I'll talk about the software here in a little bit. This particular phone that I have in my hand has 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of internal storage, and a rather massive 6,000 milliampere battery. It is both IP68 and IP69 water resistant, so it can take some high pressure water and still survive. It does have a large, beautiful 6.82 inch 3168 by 1440, 144 hertz LTPO AMOLED with 4,500 nits of brightness and a refresh rate from 1 to 144 hertz. On the back camera module, it's kind of hard to see but there are three 50 megapixel cameras. There's the 50 megapixel main camera, a 50 megapixel ultra wide, and a 50 megapixel telephoto. And then on the front in that center, we have a 32 megapixel front facing camera. This phone has all of the highest end specs you could imagine, including Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. And then along the top, there is a small little opening for the IR blaster so you can use it as a remote control. Now, when I pop my SIM into this phone, and it was a T-Mobile SIM, currently only supports the N41 band for 5G with T-Mobile, but it does support all four 4G LTE bands that T-Mobile offers. So it's pretty compatible in the US and I did see the 5G indicator on the top of the phone occasionally. Now, this one is the legend color. There's also an alpha color and a nardo gray. The alpha is more of a black color. And you maybe can tell in my hand, it is 163.37 millimeters by 76.71, by 8.13, so it's fairly thin, and it weighs in at just 213 grams. The phone really has it all, and if it had full 5G support, fewer added apps and utilities, it would be a phone I would actually consider as my daily driver. That hardware feels great in the hand with that solid build quality, and I love that the glass cover on the back of the camera module is a single piece. There's not different modules for each camera lens, and it protects those cameras, and it makes it have a nice flat surface as well. So kind of talking of the cameras, 
I shot comparison photos with an iPhone 16 Pro Max, a Pixel 9 Pro XL, and a Galaxy S24 Ultra. I shot them both inside and outside, kind of low light and well lit conditions. And the IQ 13 results were very similar to and tough to distinguish between these different flagship devices. There's a lot going on with the camera software and a lot more testing, especially with more lighting conditions and more time with the phones. The results were very similar between all of these phones. There was a little bit of uh, lighting differences as far as a little bit softer light with the IQ and the iPhone versus the Samsung and the Pixel. So some of the Android phones had a little bit colder tone to them but overall it was tough to distinguish between the flagships with very good quality from all the phones but in order to really test the capability of that supercomputing chip q2 that is iq's gaming chip and that 144 hertz oled display i saw that they suggested i try a couple of games and so i loaded up some of the suggested games and they played very well on the iq 13. the 4d game vibration was really cool especially when i was playing call of duty and that stereo audio and games like that was really really cool my wife was watching me and recording a little bit of me playing that game and she said wow that's a gaming platform that i could really get to be a fan of and i'm not really that big of a gamer because i just don't have the time for that but it's clear that the iQ 13 is really optimized for those gaming experiences. It also has some intelligent heat manipulation and management in order to reduce the heat in the phone and still have high performance. So as I mentioned earlier, the iQ 13 launches with Android 15 and that FunTouch 15 with currently the 1 October Android security update. The home screen experience is fairly stock, but the control panel is clearly different and there are several more settings than that found on a Pixel phone, along with plenty of bloatware apps and folders and other stores and things like that. So I would really have to clean it up to be a phone that I would use on a daily basis. The camera software is highly optimized for those three 50 megapixel cameras on the back of the phone with plenty of shooting modes, including astrophotography, tilt shift, which is something that I've seen and used on OnePlus phones, Supermoon, Fisheye, and more. You can also swipe up from the bottom to enable the humanistic street photography camera mode. This is very similar to a pro mode experience with millimeter focal length options and diverse color modes. I enjoyed using the iQ 13 and trying out the latest Qualcomm processor. The camera experience is fantastic and a bit overwhelming at times, but I plan to use this more for dedicated photo sessions given the capability and the results shown so far. I'm not a fan of extra apps, stores, and utilities that cannot be deleted, even if the phone does have ample storage for all of these extras. Gaming is fantastic. I enjoyed watching media on the phone and I love the look and the feel of the hardware. I don't have any pricing information to share since the iQ 13 is not available in the US and I cannot recommend it for US viewers. However, if you are located in an area where it is available, it is certainly a compelling smartphone with the latest and greatest from Qualcomm and iQ. The lovely high quality hardware, the responsive processor, ample RAM and ROM, gorgeous display, outstanding cameras, very long battery life with that massive 6,000 milliampere battery, and advanced gaming functions like audio, touch, and vibration all make this one of the best Android phones I've ever tested with some limitations, of course, being in the US. I would love to see this available in the US with support for all of our 5G bands and a little bit cleaner interface. But thanks anyway to iQ for the opportunity to try out this new amazing smartphone and give that new Qualcomm processor a try. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, interact with me here, and stay tuned for more coverage of various types of products related to technology and mobility, including e-bikes, wearables, fitness, health gear, phones, and more. And may the mobile force be with you.